Are we ready? Oh, I almost forgot. I actually have to do this. Everybody sit up really straight. Fix your eyebrows. Okay. What we're doing right now is we're hoping I'm going to give him a couple of spots and we're hoping that we can get a postcard image that features our audience instead of a performer because we realize that that is the greatest part about this show is you guys and we want to feature that somehow. So we're actually doing something sleazy in marketing right now. And I'm really tired of doing that. He, he's still back there? Oh, he's gone. Okay. How is everybody? <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you're just, you're just, you're lost already. I see that, and it's okay. I, I get that way, too, sometimes, and I'm here every week. You'll, you, you'll catch the swing of it. They keep telling me, and I, I hope I will. Um, to give you, since you're new, a quick background, the Circus Freaks, we run this because we love performance, we love performers, we love all of this nuttery. And so we make this happen every week. And while we're doing this, we're also off doing things everywhere in the city. You, you, you know, getting drunk in bars and uh, causing trouble, being asked to leave, never coming back. But also performing and doing really strange and unusual and, and wonderful things. Kids shows. It's a, it, you know, it's true. And, and, and sometimes I don't look like this. In fact, one of the kids' characters I play all of the time is a character named Rhino. Rhino was born in an arena. This is a big theater, and I, and I mentioned earlier it can be kind of daunting. But Rhino was born in an arena. You see, I was asked to go to a Boy Scout camp. We were very new as being part of the circus, and they, they said, well, you, we want you to come and perform for the Boy Scouts, but you have to be safari-themed. And we all said, of course, yes, we have that, no problem. And then we ran home and tried to come up with something. We had a tree, a stilt-walking tree, played by Marie. So, Marie Martin, thank you for that. Kasha Reese, who's one of our performers, Kasha played Moxie in a safari hat with a big bow with a giant flower. And my contribution to this lunacy was in the form of this hat that had a rhino horn and big floppy ears and a clown nose and some stupid, easily machine-washable clothes, and I was a rhino. I thought, okay, I'll, I'll just be a rhino. And I walked out to the event, and we were told, oh, you'll just clown around, it'll be fun. When we got there, they had seated 500 kids in a ring. It was an arena. Now, I know that both humans and lions end up in arenas, and it goes very poorly for the humans, and I'm assuming it goes about the same for rhinos, so needless to say, I'm pretty nervous at this point. I put one foot out into the arena, and whatever is out there that laughs at me all the time, cosmologically speaking, decides to throw me a bone to see what I'll do with it. And as I bring my foot in, the beginning of The Lion King starts playing. <laughs> and at this moment, I scream lion at the top of my lungs, run full on across the arena, and run smack into Moxie, who's got the bow and arrow, which gives her a reason to be mad at me. And suddenly, we had a show. And it was going to happen, whether we were ready for it or not. I turned around, and I'm running the other way. And all of the kids start cheering, Rhino, come here. And it occurs to me, that's probably me. <laughs> because Rhino is a rhino, which became the core of this stupid idea. Right, do the voice. Rhino is a rhino, and he does this. And so I was going to get there, but you... Okay, stop. Rhino has no business being in this room, trust me. Rhino is a very slow person with object permanence issues, okay? It's... How are all of you? <laughs> so I'm running around and these kids are cheering, Rhino, come here and hide. And I dove in the audience and everything else and they climbed up me like it was a zombie movie at half height. And I peeled them all off of me. And at that moment, someone thought, oh, we should end the show, ta-da, and we were saved. I thought we did really badly because we were so in the kids and then we forgot the audience thing and we were just there and that was everything. They had them sitting on buckets and they pulled the lids off their buckets and they came up with Sharpies and begged us for autographs. So I wrote about 500 times. I wrote, right, no, yeah, over and over. And by the end of it, Rhino was born and like a duckling, he had been imprinted upon by the lunacy of, you know, a couple hundred children. I thought this was a throwaway and of course it became something I play over and over and over. And I always delight in it because I get to be really stupid. I get to go places and you know, talk 
avidly to inanimate objects. How are you? And that works, and people laugh, and we have a good time, and it's fun. And I somewhere, the, the same thought, the little voice that's running that puppet speaks up every now and then and says, you have a tremendous ability to warp people. Kids talk to you, and you tell them things, and you answer any question they ask them with whatever's in your heart. <gasps> yeah, can you imagine? I know. It's terrifying. Well, this past weekend, after a long season of performing, I, I got a weekend off, and I got to go. We have an event called Spin Fest, and I got to go hang out at Spin Fest and play for a day and just chill out and teach circus arts to kids and, and just have some fun. And by the end of it, we had another performer at a project called Gallery at Midtown, which is at Valley View Mall. And this is an amazing thing where they have all these art galleries. Her name's Catherine Chambers. You might have noticed her a minute ago. That, she was dangling 18 feet in the air doing aerial silk magical awesomeness. And Johnny Morbid and I decided to go and, and be supportive. So we walk in the door all dressed up in our, in our, for, in our formal wear. You know, we looked exactly alike because, you know, we're, we're practically identical twins. It was really bad. We were the same colors, and I'm looking like this, and he looks all formal and clean cut and professional, and I, I made a mess of it. But it was great fun. But as I'm walking in, Johnny next to me, we're in circus colors. I'm feeling really proud. This little voice goes, I know you. You're Rhino. I'm standing in the middle of a mall. I'm surrounded by people. I'm, I'm dressed formal, and I'm not wearing a Rhino hat, let me assure you got a decision to make, warp a child, break a child's illusions. And I, I said, shh, I'm disguised as a human. <laughs> Little girl says, why? I said, they don't let rhinos in the mall. And she grabs her friends and she goes, that's Rhino. I know him. We've met him. And we were at this thing and he was there. And he's not very smart, but he's dressed up as a person. So got, and they left really quickly like that. <laughs> we went. The rest of the event was amazing. Rachel Hollett was there hooping. Catherine, like I said, dangling from the ceiling. We were there having a good time. But there was this moment for me where I realized, wow, I really got in someone's head and warped their reality and then maintained it. <laughs> I realize places like this are important to up-and-coming artists and why I'm such a huge champion of this event. Because out there in the world doing whatever it is you do, you can screw somebody up if you do it wrong. In here, I promise you, these people are already pretty screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> so really, what harm is there in trying and what you can try to be is real or dumb or funny or whatever it is you have inside you. I love that we have this place. I'm, I'm proud to stand up here every week, and I thank you all for coming to this place that we call the Open Stage. Welcome.